So today we'll talk about Java because Java is not perfect. What does it mean it's not perfect? Actually, it means that Java sucks a little, at least compared to other languages. So to prove that, I prepared some really small cold snippet in Scala. And and it's not like I'm super big Scala fan, and I think that Scala is better than Java in every single concept out there. But to create an immutable structure person with all the getters and all the setters, hash code equals implementation to string in Scala, I just need to have one line, right? Not bad. So. Let's try to write something similar that works in the same way in Java. So first of all, we need to create a class that will have the immutable final field, like for the first name and the last name. And we create the constructor. Also, we need to create some accessors so our fields are available from the outside of the, uh, of the class. And we need to create also the equals and hash code implementation so our structure works fine with the Java collections, right? This, ac this is actually the... Uh, automatically generated IntelliJ code. I hope you are not writing this hell from your hand. So, well, could be better, right? So, just to make sure we are on the same page, this is good, but this is not. <laughs> Agree? Agree? Okay, so now, since I know that you are not sleeping anymore, it's time to introduce myself. I'm Mateusz Herich. I am the co-organizer of the GDG Krakow events. I am also the member, Android member of the Google Developer Expert Program, and I work as an Android developer in, at the base CRM. And today, I will talk about Guava, which, is, which stands for the Google's Java, that can make your Java hot again. So, let's start with some code samples. Let's say we got a method that is responsible for accessing the best match, the best person match for a given name. So, let's say we got the another method that, that is called find people by name that is returning the list of people, but, and we are supposed to uh, to retrieve the very first one, since probably the find people by name performs some ordered SQL query or, or something. But it may happen that there is a no match for a given name. So what should we return? What do you think? Actually, yeah, that's the most popular answer for that question. But, but let, me, let me tell you the truth. Uh, what's the, what's the, what the null is? Let's, let's try to find the definition on the Wikipedia. So, well, some piece of bullshit, like a wall of some weird definition. So, I think the better definition will be made by, can be made by this guy, right? Who's that guy? You recognize him? This sir is Null's inventor. He invented a lot of things, uh, a lot of algorithms, and he's a very important person for the computer science nowadays and in the past. He made what computer science is now. But he invented Null, and after, after several decades, he said that it was his billion dollar mistake, right? Billion dollar. Billion. It's shitloads of money, right? And actually, you can say, OK, but Google API and Google SDK for Android often returns null in such situations, right? So we have, for example, the location manager. And in documentation, uh, there, is a, there is a sign that if the provider is currently disabled, null is returned. But this is Google, right? They can afford one dollar mistake. We as a single developers, probably not. So in Guava, there is something called optional. Someone from, uh, from the audience already, already said that. And optional can be used to make the signature of this method explicitly 
tell the caller that this method may return something or may return nothing. So instead of returning something or null, we are using the strong typing system to tell explicitly the caller of the method that it may happen that there will be no result. Very cool, right? No? <laughs> OK, so let's go for something less controversial. Multimaps. This will be fast. So how often do you meet the case when you want to use a map, but you would like to associate more than one value with one key? Probably it happened to you multiple times, like 250 or many times, right? So it would be nice to have a structure that lets you do that. And often developers who are not using Guava in their projects or any other library are using the map that the key is the obvious key and the value is the list of values that can be associated uh, with, that, with that given key. But in such situation, you need to handle many cases, like what will happen if the first key is being put into the map? Like you need to allocate the list structure and put it into the map and then use the same list when, mm, when other values are added for a given key. If the last value for a given key is returned, you need to like probably delete that, that list or reuse it. Actually, there is a lot of work uh, to make that multi-map, let's call it multi-map structure, work pretty well. And in Guava, you receive it out of the box. You just create the multi-map, and there are plenty of the multi-map implementations in Guava. And the most obvious is the hash multi-map, uh, which is using the hash codes to, to find the proper key inside the structure. And you can do something like this, right? You just put key one and, and, and the second key, and then like you put three different values associated with one key. And it works just fine, just like this, without writing any additional line of code. You got it for free. Sorry? Of, of put method? Uh, there is a collection of, of values. OK. <clears throat> Immutable collections. Very important part of Guava. I think, personally, I think that's my very favorite feature uh, of the whole library. So, but to talk about the immutable collections, we need to understand what is the mutable state and why mutable state is super bad. So, this is the mutable class, right? So, we have the, some first name and the last name, and instead of finalizing those fields and putting them to the constructor, we got some setters, so we can set it like, somewhere else, right, from some other thread in random moment. So, oh. so basically, mutable state has a lot of disadvantages. Of course, sometimes you cannot avoid it, but you should try to avoid it as, as often as possible because race conditions are more likely to to be visible in the applications that have a lot uh, that have a lot of of mutable state, right? So it's also harder to debug, right? Because you are starting a debugger, you are putting like eight breakpoints in your Android Studio, and you are just looking line after line how the state is changing of your object. It's just making troubles, right? And do you trust your libraries? Really? Seriously, do you trust them? Let's say we got a method that accepts my strings and it's called do something crazy with my strings. How do you know what this method will do with your list? You can look at the source code, right? But if there is a source code, it's available, of course. But let's say the body of this method looks like this and you are putting the mutable collection inside the property method that is closed source. It may happen that something can be broke inside, right? It happened, for example, in Android L with a thread uh, that got the interrupted method for checking if the thread is interrupted, but there is also the is interrupted method, right, in, uh, uh, in, in the thread. But the difference is that the interrupted rests the flag interrupted, and is interrupted is not doing that. 
So what Android L is doing in the bitmap factory decode bitmap is just resetting the interrupted flag after you try to decode your bitmap. So actually, it's not it's uninterrupting your thread, which is super awful, uh, super awful uh, side effect, and you want to avoid that. So yeah, but maybe we shouldn't be that paranoid, like. Most of the libraries we use in our Android applications are probably open sourced, are probably well maintained, are, are not probably behaving like this, and don't have methods called do something crazy with something, right? So we should be fine. But, asterisks, right? Sometimes you are invoking the methods that are wrote by this guy who left the company six months ago, and you don't even know when he is living right now. So immutable means it's not changed over the time. Of course, you can still do, I know, you can still do some reflection magic on your objects, and you can break everything. But basically, it's much, much harder and much, much easier to spot the code reviews. So. Immutable list, for example, in Guava, looks like this. You got the builder, and you fill it with some values, and then you execute, obviously, the build method, and, and it's done. And this list cannot be changed using, using the methods. Of course, in Java, uh, in list got some methods inside the interface called add, at all, clear, and stuff, which is different than in Scala when there is a different interface. Uh, for uh, for the immutable collections, but in case of this implementation, it's just returning the unsupported operation exception. So after putting that list in some method that is doing some crazy shit, you will just see the unsupported operation exception right after right after the method is called. So you will know that something got broken. <laughs> and also, of course, there are other implementations of the immutable state of the immutable collections. In Guava. So we got the immutable map, immutable set, and Im simply immutable everything from, uh, from the Java collections. OK. Some non obvious Guava features. Because we all know that Guava is about collections heavily, right? Like we got some collection transformations, we got some different collection types, but Guava is not only about collections. For example, my second favorite feature, right af just after the, uh, the mutable collections, is the caches. And we often use caches on the Android since still Android is not a farm of servers that can compute forever or do some crazy, crazy computations in 54 seconds. Android is basically still a device that shouldn't be uh, forced to compute some, some heavy things. But sometimes we are forced, and we should try to use caches as often as possible. But how to implement the proper cache? We need to handle like, uh, several types of problems, right? So expiration. How, uh, for how long the given key is being valid? Invalidation, of course. What if we know explicitly that the key is not valid? We should be able to, mm, to invalidate a given key in a cache. Size, what if we want to limit the size of our cache? Like, and there is a lot of more. Like, that's only the beginning of the things you need to handle when you are writing your own cache. But in Guava, you can use the cache builder. And in ca cache builder offers you the fluent interface to make things like expire after write, after 10 minutes. And maximum size is 1,000. And this is, the lo this is the loader, and in Java 8, so in five years when it will be available on, uh, on Android, you will be able to put some super nice lambda in here. Right now we got some kind of small anonymous monster, but basically the interface is simple, right? So actually, the cache loader load method will be invoked only in case the given key is not yet cached in the cache. You can think about the cache as the intelligent map that is used for the cache purpose. So Guava is a huge library, right? And those things I covered 
are just the beginning. There are things for you, like starting from a simple stuff like the preconditions, uh, going through some more complex uh, stuff like the concurrency libraries, like the or or the I/O or the event bus. But don't use Guava's event bus on Android because Otto, for example, is taken off from the Guava and it's more convenient to use on Android. And there are tons, tons, tons of utilities. And if you will start to use Guava in your project, if you are not doing that already, you will suddenly find yourself uh, think, uh, before you start to code something trivial, you will start to just think, OK, but maybe Guava already solved that problem. And guess what? In most situations, you will be right. So. Uh, Basically, all the features of Guava and explained in this link. I will publish the presentation, so or or you you can just you you can just Google it, of course. And last note, I was talking about Guava several times. Not the same presentation, but on the smaller events and on the bigger events, and always in the context of Android. I had this question, and since we don't have the time for questions today because we are late, I will answer this right away. Uh, you know the 65k methods problem, right? Like there is a method limit on Android. And people often are complaining that, OK, but we are not going to use Guava because Guava is like a 20k methods. Still smaller size than the Google Play services, right? But yeah, it's huge and it's a problem, I know. We, need, we needed to handle it in our project uh, like one year ago. And there are ways to do that. Like, Actually, the, the way we choose in our project was using the ProGuard for the debug builds. We disabled all the obfuscation features, just enabled the shrinking of the methods that are not being used. So the ProGuard goes really, really fast. It's nothing compared to what you are doing when you are building the release build with the obfuscation, with the need for generation, the, the map, the mapping for, for those obfuscation and for some other optimizations. You just configure your ProGuard in debug to run and shrink methods that you are not using in your project. And it's fine. It takes like five seconds. Not bad. Of course, you can do some multi-dex multi ma magic, or you can strip the jar. There are scripts available that are taking always the newest versions of Guava and asking you what features of Guava, what packages are you really using, and are removing those packages. Actually, there are ways to use Guava and don't care about the 65k methods problem. Just give it a try and become a Java addict. So do you have the time for questions? Yes. Questions. Yep. OK, actually. Java is the is used for the enterprise uh, enterprise system since 1994. And I understand that it's not that easy to add your features to the Java languages. So obviously, Java is developing slower than any other modern language based on the JVM platform. So it's not that modern as Scala is. It's not that modern as Groovy is. As we know, we are using Gradle, I think. Uh, also, Kotlin. Uh, I didn't code anything in Kotlin, but I saw some code samples, and it seems, of course, like more, comp more, like nicer, ni nicer than Java is. Actually, it's very easy to find the language that is easier to look at and easier to write and more pleasant to write than Java, right? Uh, and those are not only two languages that are like more modern. I think they're more modern, actually. Any other questions? OK, as I said, immutable collections for me are very important. Actually, because if you look at your code, probably in most of the cases, when you return some list, you are most likely not editing that list anymore. For example, when you are retrieving a list of some objects from the database, you are probably just reading, uh, reading from that list. So why not use the immutable collections? Just to make sure that no one is doing something crazy. Also. 
I like the optional thing. As also, there are plenty of features of Guava that I didn't cover, and the features I did cover are, are the most important for me. Like, I really like optional because I hate thinking about the method, can it return null or not? Should I perform a null check or not? So optional is also very convenient. Actually, I recommend you because everyone is different. Scout that link and check what you like the most. OK, guys. Uh, I don't know if there are some other questions. You can you can ask me ask me later. I am here for the whole day, and I will be here for the after party as well. And so I need to perform some spam. Uh, do you like spam? <laughs> you know, we are organizing the deaths in Poland also uh, in Krakow on the 8th of November, and ticket price is three euro. You want to be there? There will be like a 350 other people. And four parallel tracks, all about the Google technology. No, not only. And join us. Thanks. <laughs>